Hello there everybody, we have lots of exciting stuff planned today. We're going to be talking about SPA frameworks, comparing Svelte versus Vue versus React, and then figuring out which one is best. And then right at the end I'm going to talk about which one am I going to be using for my development in 2022. So most importantly, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, it really, really helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, starting off with a bit of background. React was invented in 2013 by a company that was formerly called Facebook. Vue was invented in 2014 by an independent developer named Evan Yu, and Svelte was invented more recently by a developer named Rich Harris, who sought to alleviate the issues with a lot of the other SPA frameworks. The most important thing to me on all of these is the developer experience, so we're going to dive in and understand exactly how these frameworks are structured and how to use them. Okay, beginning with React, the way that React works is by adding HTML into your JavaScript, using their own language called JSX, or JavaScript extension. By adding curly braces to the HTML part of your JSX code, you can add JavaScript variables into your HTML. Now this opens up some exciting possibilities, such as React's ability to easily manipulate the DOM using its state. For example, here we have a button where every time we click it, we run this function setCount. This setCount iterates the count by one and then passes that back to the HTML part of our JSX, which displays it on the DOM. The result is something that looks like this. Now this is very convenient once you get used to it, but for a time being you have to work with a whole new language. If you're used to vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, JSX can be quite a new thing for you. The other challenge you'll find with React is that the framework does very, very little for you. The whole idea with React is to be as lightweight and as minimalist as possible. This means that for larger things like state management, you're often going to need to import external libraries like Redux or Zustand. This also forces the developer to do a lot of things from scratch. For example, not even routing is done within React itself, but instead is done through an external library called React Router. This can be both good and bad. Some people like to have a lot of customization capabilities within their SPA framework, but for a newer developer, the amount of decision making that React requires you to do could be quite daunting. Another challenge you'll find is that React doesn't really give you a lot of suggestions on how to structure a project. For example, here we have an app.css sheet next to our app.js sheet. This is totally fine for just one or two components, but if you end up with a 100 or 150 component project, this can turn into a huge organizational headache. Now, although these can be daunting on their own, the advantage with React is that the developer community is absolutely massive, and it also has the backing of Facebook. If you run into an issue with React, you can almost guarantee that somebody else has had the exact same issue, leading to very few roadblocks as a developer. You can almost always find your answer on Stack Exchange with React. And then if you need suggestions on how to structure a project or external libraries to use alongside React, there's an infinite number of options. Okay, moving on to Vue, you're going to find that this looks quite a bit different than React. This is because Vue uses something called template syntax, which is quite a different way to set up your components. Whereas with React, we had a CSS sheet that we were importing into our JavaScript. Our JavaScript, which had a little bit of HTML-like syntax down at the bottom, Vue is entirely different than this. Up at the top, script is our more traditional JavaScript. Our template is something similar to the HTML part of our JSX and React, and then style below is all of our CSS. And this is really where we can observe the major difference. See, Vue is giving us a lot of suggestions on how they want us to set up the project, and you'll notice this throughout the framework. For example, unlike React, routing is built in natively. Styling, they're giving you suggestions on how to do it. State management, built in natively. Even animations and transitions for your components built in natively. This can be very good as the learning curve for Vue is a lot less than it would be for React. However, the downside is this limits your versatility. If I'm animating components in React, I can use something like React Spring or Framer. I have the ability to make that decision myself, whereas Vue is kind of forcing their own way of doing things upon you. That being said though, the developer community for Vue is much smaller than it is for React. That means that if you run into issues, there might be a slight chance that it hasn't been seen before. Though the Vue documentation is far, far better than the React documentation, and will give you much more suggestions on how to do things and maybe resolve the issues that you run into. Another neat thing with Vue is how they manage state. For example, here's the same counter functionality that we saw in React, but with Vue. Here what they're doing is they have the state managed using something called ref, and then every time you click the button, it runs this count iterate function. As you can see, there's much less syntax here than there was for doing the same thing in React. Another cool thing is that Vue is managing state in a way that is reactive. A big complaint with React, which Rich Harris outlines in a speech why React isn't reactive, I'm going to link to down in the description, is that React operates through a pull mechanism. Every time that the state changes, it has to check every single component to check if it has to re-render, and this causes a lot of unnecessary re-renders. Vue is much more targeted in the way that it manages state, where every time state updates, it knows exactly what to change on the DOM, resulting in fewer re-renders and much better performance. Now this is a gross oversimplification. I recommend you check out the speech in the description. It'll outline this process much more detailed. Moving on to Svelte, you're going to notice that it's quite similar to our Vue application. 
It uses the same HTML template syntax to help organize your components. However, you'll notice that state is managed not through a ref component like it is in Vue or React use state, but instead just regular vanilla JavaScript variables. For example, our counter over here, when we click our count, it runs this handle click and then just iterates a regular JavaScript variable. In this way, the syntax or svelte can oftentimes be a lot more intuitive for a vanilla HTML CSS JavaScript developer. However, the major benefit of svelte is not really in the syntax, but actually what's going on behind the scenes. See, with any of our SPA frameworks, when we're ready to deploy them, we run something called a build command, npm run build. This creates a new folder called build, which bundles your project into static files that can more effectively be run inside of the user's browser. With your code though, you're also getting your dependencies that you import for your project, as well as the React or Vue library itself. Because of this, your static files has a little bit of extra baggage due to the framework. The real magic with Svelte is that it is not a framework, it's actually just a compiler. So when you run build on your Svelte project, it carries no baggage with it, there is no Svelte library. It bundles down to very low level JavaScript that could run in the user's browser far more efficiently and offer much higher performance than a framework that brings baggage with it. Because of this, the performance of Vue and React can in no way compete with the performance of Svelte. And then also the code that you're shipping over to your user's browser once the project is complete is also much smaller. However, the major downside with Svelte is that it is a newer project than the other two, and there's also a much smaller development community. This means that if you're running into issues, you might not find an answer as easily as you would with the other two frameworks. That being said though, like Vue, their documentation is unbelievable, and they even offer their own sandbox that you can work out of. So back to the question, which of these is best? And the answer is really all of them and depending on what you're building. If you're trying to get a job or trying to build enterprise level applications, you should definitely start with React. However, if you're looking for something that is easy to learn or something that is a lot more intuitive to pick up, Viewers Felt is your better option. If performance is a really major concern for you, then go towards something like Svelte, who knowing that if you take it on, there's a much smaller development community and you might not get your questions answered as easily. With this, really what framework am I using in 2022 to develop my applications? And the answer might surprise you, it's actually none of these. See, the thing with these frameworks is that I think over time they're actually going to become more like languages. Although there are many new things being developed on them, for example, if you've seen the React 2021 conference, they're changing a lot more slowly than we would like. The really cool developments are coming out of something called meta frameworks, which are the frameworks built on top of these frameworks. See, each of these frameworks has a corresponding meta framework. The major one for React is Next.js, the major one for Vue is Nuxt, and the major one for Svelte is SvelteKit. The capabilities offered by these meta frameworks blow the original ones out of the water, in my opinion. For example, many of them allow you to do API routes, giving the capability to develop a full stack application on any of them. They give things like static site generation, server side rendering, incremental static regeneration, and tons and tons of more developments that will supercharge the way that the web is developed. Also, the developments on these are happening much faster than they are in the original frameworks. Because of that, in 2022, I think that far fewer enterprise-level applications will use the vanilla frameworks and instead use a meta framework on top of them. If you're a newer developer, I'd recommend learning one of these first, and then once you master them, immediately move on to one of these and then try to push your capabilities to develop better websites. Okay, that concludes our breakdown of SPA frameworks. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and most importantly, we'll see you next time.